to thank God for what he has done for me with regards to deliverance in the area of matters that concern marriage it's stemming from the M3 meetings that's the mending marital meandering meetings so I titled this testimony I may have become a eunuch for the wrong reason my son my father said I have a piece of advice to give you be careful about making promises to women especially with regard to marriage they can make or marry you this was the major emphasis of the instructions I received from my dad as I was leaving for university eight years ago it's amazing how God planned it in such a way that the three major times my father has called me to sit me down he was always counseling me about women now what no one except me knew at the time was that I had already broken that rule with at least two ladies it was too late I had already promised the first girl I had asked out and started something with in secondary school that I was willing to wait for us to mature and get married how foolish I was no matter how long it took this was especially because she seemed to be mounting pressure on me to go into immoral stuff with her and it was my principle not to go into certain things until I was married things ended with her quickly anyways story for another day the next girl I made such a promise to was after secondary school when I asked her out she asked me to wait for nine years for her specifically and I promised her I would with such vigor despite clearly knowing clearly enough because of certain prophetic encounters I had because of her that she was heavily heavily demonized because she was dedicated to witchcraft kind of ancestral stuff and I would have encounters where people would come and threaten me that I should leave their queen alone and stuff like that but I still went on to make such a promise I mean she had once stabbed me repeatedly with a barrel until I was bleeding now before I even ventured into any such relationship I was typically disgusted at the guys I saw in school who kept hopping from one bus stop to another the bus stop being girls I mean there was a guy in our school who was involved with a group of four close friends and none of the close friends knew about it so he was seeing four friends four people four girls that were friends and they didn't know but you come and just with us guys and we'll be laughing about it so seeing those kind of things made me vow to never be like that I would always tell I would always tell all that care to listen that my first relationship will be my last and I would say it repeatedly meaning that I was going to stay faithful to that very first relationship till I got married to whoever the girl would be while that made me sound like a principled person and now realize it was from a place of pride and it didn't matter that I had good intentions why because I had been repeatedly cursing myself for real so there were two heavy heavy things here I had laid a foundation with a course right limited myself to a first relationship then I built on this course by making such promises so those are two things there was even something heavier backing those these two things I'll explain now it is already enough problems that our words have great impact and can produce life and death in unfathomable ways but if you were from my family and especially in line to inherit a satanic priesthood that my fathers belonged to for generations your words had extra anointing on them to make sure they didn't fall to the ground so if you heard my testimony before I come from the stories and the visions I've had following my Psalm 39 what my father told me was that in our family lineage you know they worship a deity who anointed their words so they could say things manipulate you make you lose your mind and curse you and the story is told that whenever my grandfather was angry and he said anything it will very surely come to pass and it will not make any sense so there was all that so now adding that to all of these things so and this was me cursing myself so if what i said to other people and of course in secondary school i used to say things to people and it will happen like i would say things out of anger and it used to happen it happened repeatedly so knowing that not just cursing people would work but even myself it was going to work 
in addition to these two things, was like a threefold cord. So the satanic anointing, the cursing myself by saying that and after the first, I'm not going to do anyone. Then plus the promises I made was like a threefold cord. How did it manifest? I began to see and understand most of this during and after the M3 meetings. That is, mending, me attra- me at- marital meandering. <laughs> So one way I was greatly helped during these meetings was that God began to shine light on my past and reminded me of visions and experience I had had in the past and was connecting dots for me. Well, true to my words, my first relationship, which of course was not successful, was going to be my last. No relationship I had after that lasted for more than three months or four months. One of the girls just suddenly said she was not doing it again. Why? She did not know. When I sent people to her, she told them, paraphrase salvation is probably the best guy i've dated but i just don't want it again i don't know why the other one it was the faithful me who ended it how did it happen i remember going into the bathroom one day and all of a sudden i began to feel feverish i began to count the tiles and behave like someone that was going to go crazy i knew i had to immediately end the relationship i was with I was in at the time or something bad would happen to me what I did not know so my friends then called me crazy because this was more like the best girl I had had at the time so I sent her a text at that red dot a paraphrase if you love me you will let me go I am not saying I want to end it I'm just saying that if you don't want me to run mad or die you will have to let me go it, and so these are just two examples. I think I was involved about four girls or so. So it was easy for me to get into every, any relationship because of that anointing I spoke about. So people used to wonder how I was able to go for the girls. It's really because I usually went for the older girls. I mean, the first girl I was 14 years at the time. So, and it would be strange how at the amount of success, success I would have, I would write, I would say things. I just always found the words. So it was easy for me to get into a relationship. Where even when people said this person is difficult, I would say, Miami, bet you see something. And I always even loved it when there was difficulty involved. It was always fun for me. So, but I will never be able to maintain anyone. Something would either happen to me or the person, and it will not work out. Now, while I'm aware that God's sovereignty was working in all of this to restrain me from venturing into sexual immorality. Because of a certain consecration that I must keep. I couldn't be more sure now, looking back, that my words had done great damage. Like I said, okay, so how did deliverance come for me? Like I said, one way my deliverance came was God giving me light into my past and even things He had told me long ago. In 2017, during a particular meeting, Pastor had asked, Pastor, Pastor had asked us to pray to God to talk to us about our future. It may have been the first time you raised such a prayer. I was shown a vision, one of my clearest visions in this life, where I was given a paper and five things were written on the paper. All, none of them was written in English except number three. And number three was written marriage. And in front of it was written an X, indicating that there was a cancellation. And right in front of that number three was dropped a biro. I concluded that, you know, that I was called to be a eunuch. Maybe that was why God was canceling marriage. And the ex was indicating that I had the power to change it, to decide. At least that's what I thought at the time. And the lesson there is not to be quick to judge. I know better now, by the way. So, but certain things have happened after that that made me, made me begin to doubt that interpretation. Things I cannot yet talk about. Years passed and I became very confused about the subject of marriage and my life. I could tell God was trying to tell me something, but I couldn't tell. In 2021, pastor taught us on a certain day, one of those days he talked about making vows. And he made us pray about the promises we had made to people, which we know we will never be able to keep. I can't exactly remember if he asked us to go back to the people to recount our promises but i did i messaged all the girls about four of them i had been involved with in any way and i suspected i may have made a promise to and i told them this i said this i said this nine years this that this that 
that I am sorry, I didn't know what I was doing at all. That it cannot happen. Now let us settle that whatever I said, just delete it. And you know, they were saying things like, eh, well, we were children then. Eh, eh, eh. But I knew what I was going through, so I had to obey. It didn't matter if you understood or not. And it's amazing that this is nine years after I made that promise to that girl. And I'm still in school. Right? And this nine years is when that M3 meeting happened. So, another thing is why we should not make promises because you cannot determine the future. That's why it's dangerous to make such promises. So, that was a layer of deliverance for me. One of the three cords broken. But I did, there was more to fight, but I didn't know yet. During the two M3s, that's the one on the 2nd of October and, and the one on the 3rd of November, but especially the last one, which was focused on breaking ungodly covenants. I was reminded of the course from years back, all of a sudden, as we were praying, which I had forgotten. In fact, all the pieces of this story I am telling came mostly in that meeting. It was like God was sitting me down and painting pictures, painting pictures, and showing me things. I was also referred back again to the vision from 2017. The paper, the marriage, the eunuch stuff, I had thought. And I began to understand that I was being shown that I had with my own hands cancelled out God's marriage plans for me. And, you know, any plan of any possible future marriage. I had to renounce the course to be free from it and renounce pride as well. I was also reshown a vision from years back where I had been preser preserved or severed from the dirty anointing from my lineage. So those, that was God addressing two things in that meeting. Remember I talked about three courts, the satanic anointing, the courts I laid on myself, and the promises I made. So in 2021, I had handled the promises. Then in this meeting, God was making me handle the courses and was also showing me that he had handled the thing about the satanic anointing. And it was around the time I got born again in 20. 2015 and so it was more like god was telling me that these three cords have been free from these three cords and that meeting i was just more or less thanking god as god began to show me more and more and more things he even began to speak to me about show me why my father always spoke to me about women i mean i did of 30 my father told me as you did so if you give him a he wasn't I, I can't think of any other thing he has spoken to me about and I wouldn't know why and I've not bothered to ask. So I began to have a lot of understanding. Since that day I've had more peace and less confusion about the matter of marriage because the matter of marriage has slowly been building up agitation within me. I had also started developing a big fear of failing in it if I ever got into it. Some of my friends here would always hear me say it is better to be a sadhu. I will say things like, ah, I don't want to marry someone that would be like a JC Bello because and it was typically whenever I heard stories of failed marriages, I would say that all the time. It was no longer because, now the thing about being a sadhu was no longer because I thought God wanted it for me, but because I was in a place of turmoil concerning the matter. And another thing that has happened after then, aside God taking all these things away, is that I've also begun to be able to hear God and see setting um pointers more clearly and you know without having so much confusion and i'm really grateful for all this what would my story have been maybe he's a man of god a preacher but he has never had a successful marriage in fact this is his fourth or fifth marriage as we've heard that has happened with many a preacher it is still god's plan if it's, it's still a possibility that god may want me to walk the path of a eunuch but it will come because of his words and not because of mine. And I'm grateful to God for that deliverance. And another thing that happened as I was typing his testimonies, so for years I've been seeing the number three. God talks to me with numbers a lot. And I will see, I mean for years, is it I'm in class, whenever we are taking a number, will that be number three, number 33? I'll always keep seeing three, 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 like it's it has done for the past four or five years. And some days ago, I became very agitated, like, oh, what are you trying to say? This has been years now, and I don't know. And as I finished writing this testimony, I, I just came, I just heard it. This is one of the 
one of the layers to understanding why I was showing you that number. And so for me, so that's another level of life that God has, another level of confession that God has been clearing from my life. And I'm really grateful to God that he did not allow me to walk the paths and end up in a place that he didn't plan for me. May God's name be praised.